Hurricane Aaron continues to spin away out here in the Atlanta this evening as it also continues to grow in size. The big question is how close is this going to get to the eastern seaboard? Here to give you the latest information. My name is Mitch. Good evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well. First thing we'll go over is current conditions with Aaron itself. The latest from the National Hurricane Center. We'll discuss all model guidance and we'll dive deep into which models are getting this the closest, which models are keeping this further out to sea, and we'll speak on impacts in that section also. We'll speak on a couple other areas of interest behind Aaron, and we'll go over model guidance uh, with that. Is this any kind of threat on down the road? Uh, what are these model runs showing? We'll get very detailed. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it, and if anybody has anything that I can pray about, or pray over, please put it in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling this evening. So this is Hurricane Aaron, now a Category 2, 105 mile per hour hurricane per the latest 8 p.m. update. And I mean, this just looks like your classic Category 2 hurricane. There's no cleared out center. Uh, this system went under an eyewall replacement cycle a few days back and it never really recovered from it because after that, it tried to get its act together, strengthened a little bit, but then it got blasted by wind shear, which was modeled pretty well um with this system so here it is still popping off cold cloud tops indicated by you know the blacks and the whites right over the actual low level cir circulation all this convection is mid-level so it's actually above the lower level circulation so just definitely not a major hurricane anymore will it have a shot to become a major hurricane again i think it will uh but as of right now peak intensity um, is at 110 mile per hour storm. So it could strengthen a little bit over the next couple of days. So this is a live look at the system starting to pull north, but man, it just feels like this thing has barely moved over the last couple of days. Latest from the National Hurricane Center, like I said, 105 mile per hour category two hurricane. It is forecast uh, to remain that overnight. And then by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon, could strengthen back into maybe a 110 mile per hour category two. So, I mean, that's a higher end category two hurricane, but this is the hurricane itself. Uh, Cone goes up here and uh, looks like it'll pass between Bermuda, which, by the way, has tropical storm watches and then Carolina and just the East Coast uh, line as a probably a category two hurricane. But it literally splits both of them. Now, I do want to mention tropical storm warnings are up for eastern areas of North Carolina, certainly all the outer banks and tropical storm watches has been extended all the way up through um, areas of the coastline of Maryland and places like that. So, I mean, uh, they've actually extended the tropical storm watches a little bit further north. Will they extend them all the way up to Delaware, maybe the Jersey Shore? I wouldn't rule it out, but, you know, some people might be wondering how we got tropical storm warnings up when we're not even in the cone in this area. Well, just remember that this cone is not an impact cone. So impacts could extend way away, way out from the center. This is where the center of the storm could potentially go. So I'll draw on this for a minute. Uh, the center of the storm could still veer out over here or maybe further to the east. Right now they have it going right in between that. So the cone is spread out from right where the center of the storm could go. So we are definitely going to get impacts over here, out over the open water and over here. And it's wild. Bermuda is way over here. And you guys are going to get enough impacts to have tropical storm watches in place. And we'll see if we'll get an upgrade to a tropical storm warning. So it, the, the reason if you're thinking like, why? How is that the case? Well, it's because the wind field is getting so large Strong winds are going to extend well out away from the center of this storm system. Tropical storm force winds, 40, 50, 60, 70 mile per hour wind gusts are just going to be way out away from the center of this uh, low pressure. So a uh, very large hurricane. It's already very large right now. So if you're wondering, well, that's the case. So let's get all this back off your screen here. And we will take a look at the cone up here. Is Newfoundland in the cone yet? You guys are not. You're well to the south, but I do think impacts are possible to likely, especially in Southeast Newfoundland. So latest call from the National Hurricane Center, that's it, still expected to veer off. Um, latest with model guidance, this is the Euro from earlier. Let's see if we have the latest Euro. Uh, we do not. So uh, this is the one from this afternoon. We're waking up, it's saying, the Euro's thinking this is gonna re-strengthen overnight. Right now it's, um, I believe in the 950s as far as millibar. Uh, but you know we're not gonna focus too much on strength, really just the size of the storm and how close it gets. But as we start to get into tomorrow afternoon, we're going to start to see a lot of impacts in the Outer Banks. Already coastal flooding. Water's already getting pushed up against the Outer Banks right now and areas of the Carolina coastline. 
But as we start to get into late tomorrow night into Thursday morning, this uh, Aaron is making its closest pass to the Outer Banks. Uh, and even though, you know, the Outer Banks isn't in the yellows and the oranges and the reds, trust me, we're going to get all out tropical storm force winds across areas of extreme eastern North Carolina, even up into the coastal areas, southeast Virginia, the Tidewater, coastal areas of Maryland, and probably even all the way up into Delaware. But this continues to move north, so we're getting into Thursday morning. We're seeing uh, just a stout northern northeasterly flow right into the Outer Banks. And uh, this is a huge hurricane, guys. I mean, huge. And then it races off. So this is the closest pass right here. This is Thursday morning. Look how close it is. I mean, look how how much the Outer Banks almost extends into some of these yellows and oranges, which is really the intense part of the hurricane. Uh, we move past this. How close is this going to get to southern New England? Someone says you, did, you didn't mention uh, the northeast in, I believe, this morning's video. Well, I did, but, you know, some people miss it. Here it is again. The euro has ticked closer uh, to southern New England. So technically the rainfall, the bands do not get to you, but I'm telling you, we're going to get tropical storm force winds up against the coastal areas of the Jersey Shore, Long Island, southern New England, out on Cape, Co Cape Cod. I'm sorry. Martha's Vineyard, guys, I am wore out. I just did two soccer practices, so this video is probably definitely not going to be as crisp as normal. Uh, but anyways, we start to get into Friday morning, and this thing begins to head off. And I mean, it's definitely much closer to the northeast than, say, a few runs back. If we go a few runs prior to this, look at this trend. This was the run from a few days ago. This is the current run. Look at that tick northwest. I mean, that's a substantial trend northwest. So, of course, the further northwest this gets, the more stronger winds we're going to get across areas of the coastal regions of New England and the northeast. Now, what about Nova Scotia and Newfoundland? This has really gotten close to Nova Scotia. I mean, look at this. The, the rain shield is right on your doorstep of the southern coastline of Nova Scotia. Cape Breton Island, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very close. And then we start to get into uh, Saturday, into Sunday morning. It clips you guys on the Avalon Peninsula, St. John's, Southeast Newfoundland. And you guys, regardless if you get rain from this, you're going to get some strong gusty winds. I'll show you that here in a second. GFS, we'll have to start back here to the southeast. And same thing, guys. I mean, it makes a close pass. This is Thursday morning. Look how close it is to the Outer Banks. not quite as close as, say, the Euro, but it's close. And then it races off. And then I do want to mention tomorrow there could be a flooding threat sort of a pre-event ahead of um, Aaron, almost like a squeeze play kind of setup. So I'd watch out for some heavy flooding rain. We, we actually need the rain across areas in the Northeast, and you're going to get it tomorrow. But as we're starting to get into Thursday, here comes the hurricane, and it has ticked closer. But uh, it looks like the GFS is sort of evening out now, a little small-scale ticks back and forth. But uh, definitely misses the Northeast, the brunt of it. And then we switch this to... Atlantic Canada, how close does the GFS get? <clears throat> it's well offshore, but still close enough to bring strong gusty winds because this wind field is expanding so much. And you might be thinking, Mitch, you are talking to death about this uh, wind field. Well, this is why. This is verifying for tomorrow evening. I'm sorry, that's, this is actually this evening. Got my days mixed up. Wind field's already pretty large. This is already a large hurricane. The greens you see here into the yellows, into the reds, is tropical storm force winds. Once you get into the purple color here, that's hurricane force winds. Tropical storm force winds. 40 mile per hour winds up to about 74 mile per hour winds. You get to 75 and higher, that's hurricane force winds. So now that you know that, let's get this in motion. Watch how the wind field begins to broaden. So those tropical storm force wind gusts begin to clip the outer banks. And, uh, you know, it doesn't show as strong winds for Bermuda, but the re the way this is like hooking to the east so fast, uh, the worst of your conditions in Bermuda could actually come... I would say late Thursday, maybe into Friday morning, as this makes a pass to the north. But look how close the tropical storm force winds are to, you know, Martha's Vineyard, Cape Cod, um, it's just southeast mass, basically. And then very strong winds getting very close to the southern shoreline of Nova Scotia. And it looks like it clips the Avalon Peninsula of Newfoundland as we're getting the later in this weekend. So what about winds forecast from the latest Euro? Um, going for... 50, 60 mile per hour wind gust across the Outer Banks, even inland to the sound. Gusty winds, even just into eastern North Carolina in general. Some 30, 40 mile per hour wind gusts possible right up into the tidewater. Could get some water 
uh, that's initially pushed up into this area, but then we're probably going to get a flow that actually supports water getting pushed out um, just with the cyclonic flow of the system and it passing through. But I mean, this is some gusty winds along the coastal areas of Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, up into Long Island, southern New England. I mean, in this basically corridor here, we got some strong gusty winds, guys. I mean, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if they put tropical storm watches and eventually warnings all the way up to the Jersey Shore. Big wind fields squeezing up against the coastline of the Mid-Atlantic and southern New England. So we could get 30, 40, even 50 mile per hour wind gusts. And then just taking a, a closer look at, say, southern New England, I mean, going for 40, 50, maybe 55 mile per hour wind gust out in Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, uh, Cape Cod, you know, 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts are possible. I mean, even Long Island. I mean, we're going to get some breezy conditions even into New York City. Uh, but Connecticut, you know, Rhode Island, some gusty winds possible. No high-end impacts or anything like that, I don't think. But it's just stuff you got to watch out for. And then we take it on up the road to Atlantic Canada. You guys go off kilometers per hour. And, um, you know, you got some 60 to 90 kilometer per hour wind gust. So some brief tropical storm force winds. But this wind field is just offshore. And if you look at the run prior to this, it brought the winds much closer. So we're still getting some ticking back and forth with the Euro. The latest 18Z run a little bit further south. So that would be good news. Um, but I would continue to monitor updates if you live in Nova Scotia. Um, if you look at live in Newfoundland, I'm telling you, this thing could still tweak. There's a trough in place up to your northeast that could yank this further north than what's being modeled. That's why I think model guidance continues to tick back and forth. Now, time frame for tropical storm force wind gust um, is right here. You know, by the time we get into Wednesday, tomorrow, we start to see it in the eastern areas of North Carolina. And uh, yeah, so pause it if you need to here. This is the time frame we got. Um, this is actually storm surge warnings. So this is serious, guys. Storm surge warnings across areas of the Outer Banks. So, I mean, we're just going to get flat out storm surge like we have a landfalling tropical storm or hurricane. And speaking of the forecast for um, storm surge, let's see if it's increased any. No, they're still going for about two to four feet of storm surge, even one to three feet in the sound. And even one to three feet of storm surge all the way down from like around Myrtle, all the way through Wilmington, all the way up to the southern edge of the Outer Banks. And then I wouldn't be surprised if it increases up here into the tidewater and areas like that, too. So we have to watch for this. I wouldn't be surprised if they bump it up a little bit more than four feet of storm surge, especially, especially in these areas right into here. The, the basically the area that extends out the further east in the Outer Banks. So here's some graphics from a few hours ago from the National Weather Service in Moorhead City in Newport. There's those uh, storm surge warnings. Here's a discussion if you want to stop it and read it. And uh, this is maximum wave heights based off the National Weather Service here. Um, look, I mean, crazy, crazy tall waves. There, um, definitely follow Paige and Bryce's YouTube channel. Um, they are actually going to be uh, filming this, so uh, definitely check them out. They they are storm chasers. They're going to be going live, so definitely check their channel out. And then here's a, a more detailed discussion on storm surge if you want to stop it. And uh, yeah, southern areas here too. So. Um, Nice discussion here. Sorry I breezed through that pretty fast. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and bore you to death and read it word for word, but just be mindful of that. And, and I mean, listen, the, the, there's those tropical storm warnings up. And the, and the red color, tropical storm watches up in more of that muted red to pink color. And this sort of uh, greenish color here, these are coastal flood watches. And uh, we just got to be aware. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some flood watches up here in southern New England. But uh, moving past this, there's a couple other areas to watch. Um, there's a tropical wave right here in the main development region that has a 60% chance to develop in this orange area between now and the next seven days. And we have Invest 99L out here in the eastern Atlantic, for closer to Africa than it is, say, the Caribbean, has a 30% chance to develop sometime in the next seven days. Uh, so we got to watch both of these. But I'll tell you, Model Guidance really isn't super excited about either one. Uh, it was about this one. And, and this is the first wave, the one that has a 60% chance to develop. Somewhere in here is energy going to consolidate broad area of low pressure currently. And then the Invest 99L looks a lot more impressive. You got some more energy moving off too, but Invest 99L looks more consolidated, just more put together and impressive. 
But uh, just a lot of energy out here in the main development region. Something's going to try to develop. I'll tell you, look at the latest GFS. It has really folded big time to the euro. So, you know, you look at the GFS. We're going to initialize this for th uh, Thursday midday. This is our wave. Just a blob of green here, but this is a tropical wave. Does it try to develop it here? If you remember, the GFS was wanting to drop hurricane after hurricane with each run. And it always trips me out reading the comments sometimes. It's like, Mitch, are you going to talk about um, what Tropical Tidbits showed? A giant hurricane hitting Texas on uh, X date. And uh, it almost, some of it's almost like they're an, a, annoyed that I didn't talk about it. Guys, I'm not going to, already already dissect to death uh, just like single model runs. I don't want to. I don't want to talk to death on a hurricane hitting the Texas coastline 312 hours out um, because honestly, people pick and choose what they want to take in when they hear me talk. Um, and trust me, I read the comments and it, it's, it's wild to me that people take certain things out of what I say and almost put words in my mouth. And it's just, it, it's mind boggling that, that people do that, but they do, they do it with anything. Um, but you know, it's, it's crazy, but anyways, enough. I'm a little bit out of it, guys. Like I said, wore out from coaching soccer for the last uh, two hours. So um, anyways, let's get back on track. We get into Sunday morning. We have a tropical system here, sort of where Aaron is. Well, ended up going, was. We start to move into next Monday. We do have a tropical system that, that develops right here. And this could take a name, but it's just heading this on out in the sea. It doesn't bother anybody. And listen, I think this is legit. I think that anything that develops, and here it is on the Euro, watch it. it. takes a little bit of energy. You can barely see it, but it takes that energy and just thumps it on out to sea. And I think this is a legit thing because, and I mean, look, Euro Ensemble, the few members that do form, is turning this. We do need to watch Bermuda in a pattern like this. But the reason I favor this is because of this right here. Um, I'm going to show you. The Client Prediction Center going for a big old cold front. So any tropical activity that's going to get in the Southwest Atlantic is going to get pushed out to sea from this cold front. Uh, so that's not, I'm not going to sit here and say there's no threat at all from these two tropical systems, but I, I really think that this, this pattern will favor any energy that gets going unless it slips up under this. If it gets too far north, gains too much latitude, and goes in kind of the same area that Aaron went in, then it's probably just going to go out to sea. Um, and that is because there is a big old cold front, very strong cold front for late August standards on the way um, for uh, next week. And I am really looking forward to it. We'll talk a little bit more on this in tomorrow morning's video. Uh, but uh, I've been speaking on it a little bit. I do want to I want to end it with this. The latest Global Tropics Hazard Outlook. This was issued today, I believe. Between the 27th and the 2nd of September, they are giving uh, about a 20% chance of tropical development out here in the central to eastern uh, MDR main development region. So we need to watch this area. And then it does show it getting a little bit more active maybe from the 3rd to the 9th of September. It does have an area to watch here in the Bay of Campeche, the Western Caribbean, 20% chance of tropical development. And it's watching some activity in this area too. It's between the 3rd and the 9th, 20% chance of tropical development. So. It does look like, in my opinion, after we move past Aaron and these two other areas, if nothing comes from them, I do think we're going to enter a quieter period. I think the MJO is going to move into a favorable, uh, unfavorable state. Drier will likely dominate most of the Atlantic Basin. That does not mean we can't get tropical activity, but I do think we're going to get a little bit of a break coming up. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully that's the case. We can all use a break from this, right? But that's all I got, guys. Folks, I do apologize if that video came off a little bit more sloppy, a little bit more rushed. Um, just wore out. It's very late for me. 9.15 at night is about an hour past my bedtime. And uh, that's how it is. And, and there's going to be a video like this tomorrow night, too, because we have church. And we won't get back until late. So, uh, But I did want to feed you guys the latest information. No huge changes, honestly. Uh, so we're going to continue to watch this. And all that good stuff. We'll talk in the morning. Y'all have a wonderful night. God bless all y'all. And uh, talk soon.